<laughs> she just got my good looks, you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Eric, there yeah. was a couple. There was a couple things added to the agenda. Uh, oh, okay. For, um, just so you know. Um, Did I get an email? I didn't see it. No, it's it's a revised agenda. It's just like after the fact stuff. Um, are we going to go through this agenda first and then just visit at the end? Yeah, let's go to the. I I have all the updates. Um, okay. Yeah, we have an informal for uh, four four sixty eight Federal Road. That's that affordable housing project, or um, the last one that got through before the moratorium came in. So yep. Dan, Dan Bertram's going to be joining us. There we go. Awesome. Yeah, because two of these are going to just be off tonight. Yes. Yeah. So that was going to be a pretty quick hearing. Or not hearing, but uh, meeting. No, it won't. Thanks. Thanks, Fran. We need the picture. Yeah. Right there. Second See, Mick, and then we got somebody like Kurt Timmerman who comes in with all this hair and everything yeah, else. Full head of hair. It just makes it look bad. <laughs> it's not right, Kurt. And your brother, too. He's, he's even crazy. It's, that's just that's right. You see, uh, Timmerman hair is crazy. Yes. But I get my hair cut tomorrow. You'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I'm letting mine grow out. This is like, this is like <laughs> two months of growth, man. <laughs> All right. I think we're ready, right, Fran? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Got a quorum. Yep. All right. So uh, good evening. Welcome to uh, Brookfield Zoning Mission, our Zoning Commission meeting. It's April 22nd. It's our regular mission, our meeting at 7 p.m. Um, first uh, review of the minutes of the previous meetings. I make a motion to accept the minutes of the April 8, 2021 meeting. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, Fran, you're up. All right. Okay. Um, 107 Stony Hill Road was the uh, complaint on the contractor's yard. Uh, he's still been working on it. Um, I'm trying to monitor it uh, almost like on a weekly basis. He is making progress, but it's going slow, but um, he is working on it. So um, I'm just going to keep that on the report until he gets where, you know, I want him to be. 89 Whiskineer Road, uh, Gone Residence. Um, I received another complaint on this. Um, there's a lot of commercial equipment was parked in the front yard on the side of the road on Route 25. I notified DOT. Um, she had called me. The other day, um, on April 5th, actually, was her timeline. And it's a long story. I'll try to keep it brief. Um, I had an issue with these people in Danbury uh, for a long time. So I know their history. Um, and it was bad in Danbury, really bad. And with my luck, they moved to Brookfield. So they came here. <laughs> And it's starting over all over again. So I told her she needs to get the commercial equipment out of there. Um, she's at a cease and desist right now. But I'm gonna, I would like to send her a notice to give her 30 days to get the equipment out of there. Otherwise, you know, we're going to move forward. It's just, it's, it's a mess. I mean, I, I don't know what to do. Um, so this, that's what, that's my proposal. That's what I want to do. I'm going to do a letter, hopefully a letter, as long as the commission's good with that, giving her 30 days to get everything out. She needs to find another place for it. She's trying to hide it in the backyard. Um, but obviously the neighbors see it, people in the back see it and residents see it, you know, driving by. So if the commission's good with that, that's what I would like to suggest to do. Yeah. So you need us to make a motion for you, Fran? I don't. I, I don't know if the commission needs to find a motion, but not, that's not for a thirty-day notice. What do you want to do after the thirty days if uh, she doesn't agree to the notice? Then I, I'm going to go, go. I'm going to follow the procedure. I'm going to go right to a citation, um, okay. and then I'm going to do the notice of citation. Do do a hearing officer, and then I'll have to get Tom involved. You know. But I mean, the, the nightmare I had in Danbury with these people was horrible. 
I mean, it was just, we have no idea. So, um, all right. Does everybody agree to uh, have Fran send that letter? Raise your hand. Yeah. yeah. All right, Fran, that's, that's unanimous. Okay. Yep. Uh, 34 Old Old Bridge Road, uh, Amaral Residence. I re got a, no a complaint about a rooster there. Um, believe it or not, um, so I sent a notice of violation because it was under the minimum lot size for the property. Um, the owner did call me and told me that he got rid of the rooster. Uh, the rooster is no longer on the property. So that one's gone. 55 High Ridge Road. I received a complaint on um, unregistered vehicles in the driveway. So I sent him a notice of violation and he asked till tomorrow to get the vehicles out. Uh, the individual claims that he owns a car dealership uh, somewhere in Bridgeport and he's bringing vehicles back and forth. But when I went out there, there was four unregistered vehicles, four, four vehicles with no plates on them. So I will follow up at the next meeting on the status of that. <clears throat> and then um, 16 only Milford Road, Driscoll. Um, that was the contractor's yard. Um, I haven't received a response at all from them. I sent them a notice of or notice of violation, cease and desist. Um, was sent 325. They have not responded to anything. So I would ask the commission to make a motion to go to a citation. Uh, what was the address? Uh, 16 Old New Milford Road. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion for uh, going to citation, you said? Citation, yes. Yeah, 16 Old New Milford Road. Do I have a second? Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And then the last one is eight Candlewood Birches. I've been, uh, these people have two illegal sheds on their property. Again, it's a civil dispute between the neighbors. I've been dealing with the homeowner. Um, I actually talked to her yester uh, yesterday. Um, and then she's coming in the office to finish filling out the ZBA applications. Uh, hopefully ZBA will approve the existing sheds that are already on the property. So she's working with me. She's been working with the office. So otherwise that's about it. Well, it's not as bad as you thought it was going to be, Fran. No, no. Well, the eight, this 89, I, I would ask all commission members, I mean, if you're out and about over the weekend, take a ride by 89 Wiskineer Road. Um, okay. So just everyone knows what it looks like. So because th this is going to be a battle. I can see it already. So can you see that all that stuff from the road, Fran? Yes. 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 Okay, so now we're on to um, a continued public hearing uh, for application Z-21-15, three Nicole's court. Did they um, pull their application, Fran? They withdrew their application, correct? Withdrew? Yeah, okay. that's withdrawn, yep. All right, so that's withdrawn, so there's nothing to go with 5A. Um, so public hearing 6A, 128 Federal Road, application Z-21-26. We got a letter from the applicant's attorney today. I think it was today um, saying yes, that they want to postpone the opening of this meeting to uh, the next meeting. Is that correct, Fran? Yeah, yes, it is. Yes. All right. I don't think we, because the applicant asked for it, I don't think we need to make a motion to continue it. I think it just continues because the applicant, correct? I believe so. Correct. All right. Do so they need to on. do they need to re um, re advertise the public hearing for that next meeting? Because nobody will know about it unless you know. It's a new public hearing date. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, Eric. It's Neil Marcus. That's my my letter. We're talking about. I think. I just yeah. Joined yeah, you. yeah. <clears throat> we had actually asked that you table the opening of the hearing till we correct the application. So I would like not to set it for your next hearing, but ask you to just table it at the moment because we need to fix the application. It's got a significant error. And once we do that, we'll ask you to reschedule the public hearing and then you will have to notice it and we'll have to pay you for, a, you know, for whatever the advertising is. Okay. So by the applicant, they just want to put the public hearing off until the applicant gives us further notice to put it back on the schedule and give proper um, notice to the, uh, the town. That would be what we'd like to do. That's okay. Perfect. And all I right. appreciate it. All right. You're all set then. Thank you. Yep. Um, 
We're on to old business, 83 Federal Road, application Z-21-8. Is the applicant here? You're, you're muted, Fran. That's the uh, food truck people. They are, um, I sent them the ZBA application, um, so I have not heard back from them. So, All right. so, so you don't even know if they're planning on going to ZBA. I, we haven't received anything in the office at, at, the, at this time. All right. Yep. Um, I would, um, I, I, I'd ask the other commissioners, I would say that we continue this to the next, I'll make a motion to continue this to the next meeting. But Fran, I would like um, to go to the applicant and say, listen, if you haven't gone before ZBA or have um, a night or a, a time to go before ZBA, our next meeting, we're going to vote on it unless they withdraw it. Okay. Okay. Does, does that, oh, also, does that sound the, also, if they were going to get a, an agreement from a next door neighbor for extra parking spots. Right. One of the two things. Right. But if we don't hear from them by next meeting on either one, then I, I think we're going to have to just put it to vote. Okay. Okay. Does I'll the uh, commission agree with me? Yeah. Yep. All right. I'll make a motion to continue 83 Federal Road application Z-21-8 to our next meeting, which is, uh, Mary, you always May, know it. May 13th. May 13th. Yep. Do I have a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we're on to new business, 8A, 487 Federal Road, application Z-21-35, certificate of zoning compliance in the Aquifer Protection District for an equipment rental business, Chase Equipment Corp. Do I have the applicant here, Mick? Yeah, Pete and Joan are here. Uh, names and uh, addresses for the record, please. Joan D'Amato, 86 River Ford Road, Brookfield. Mm -hmm. Peter D'Amato, 86 Riverford Road, Brookfield. Okay, and uh, what would you like to do? So they wanna put the, the chase equipment, the rental equipment and supply business that they have at 487 Federal in Brookfield. And chase equipment, those are the forklifts pretty much, correct? Correct. All right. Is uh, everybody uh, familiar with 47 Federal Road? Uh, right, I'm intimate, is it? That is the building that used to house um, Tile America. Um, oh, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm so, intimately familiar with that because I had my office in that building for uh, yeah. about 10 years. Yeah. yeah um, so. so that was the Tile America building. And um, so the whole, the, the downstairs has like a small, um, a small, well, it used to be like a tile display area. And then the whole thing was really just a warehouse in the back. And then there's offices on the uh, second floor. Um, so what are they looking at at storing in the, is the whole thing a warehouse now, Mick, or is no, it? So if you're, so, yeah, if you're looking at the building, the, what we used to be Tile America is a company called FSG, which is a lighting warehouse. Okay. And then the right side of the building is uh a company called TCX or brew, uh, the brew yeah, company that sells parts. Yeah, so they're moving to Bristol. That's the space that Chase would like to go to. It's about okay. six, just it's about six thousand square feet of warehouse. Okay. So as you're facing the building from uh, Federal Road, it's the right side, lower yeah. side, correct? Yeah, back right side. Yeah. There's nothing. Yeah, just the warehouse. It's got a driving door and a loading dock and some some office space. And um, what uh, what type of oils or anything else is going to be in these um, vehicles? What type of oil? Oils and is there any oils in the vehicles? We don't stock oil. We sell it in uh, containers. But I understand. But you're having um, rental equipment there, correct? Oh, yes. Yeah. Motor. And what are they powered by? What kind of oil is in the equipment? Motor oil. Well, okay, I didn't hear the first part. Uh, hydraulic oil uh, is in forklifts. Motor oil, it has a motor. And um, 
antifreeze. It's kind of like a little industrial engine. Do you, because um, this is in our aquifer, do you have any um, plans for any curtains or any containment system where they're parked just in case they leak? I, I didn't hear that. Do you have any, if, if you have one in there, do you plan on doing anything in case there's a leak? Like, do you, can you put something around the units? I mean, you don't do the, the thing they don't do, Eric, is a lot of this doesn't happen on the site. This is more their warehouse and where they sell their supplies and parts. The majority of their work is if you had a forklift at your warehouse and you have any, their guys come to you. So, so, okay, so, so, so you're not really storing um, forklifts and those mechanicals and then they come in a rental. Okay. Right. So what yeah, is yes. really being stored at this site then? You know, what's being stored at the site? The, the parts? Parts. Uh, parts. Yeah. Um, Our vans. Our uh, vans. vans will be in there at night. We have four vans. And, it, and, and the uh, forklift themselves. The forklifts. If they come we in. Might have uh, six, seven forklifts. Okay, but these, these are forklifts, these vans come and go? Yes, mm -hmm. come and go. Um, we buy uh, forklifts from uh, out of town and uh, they come in uh, for sale for, for retail. They're retail ready. Retail ready. Okay. They used to be in Brookfield uh, many years ago on Commerce Drive. Yeah, I thought I remember. Yeah. Yeah, we used to be at 101 Commerce, Commerce. Drive. Yeah, which when is it was a new building, which is also in the aquifer, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And when did you leave that location? We left there 27 years ago. Yeah, they've been at the current spot 27 yeah. years. Yeah. And where's that? 372 Danbury Road in Milford. No, Milford. Okay, okay. So you want to come back to Brookfield? Yeah. Yeah, we miss you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been, um, we live been closer to home. We're living in this town, I think, 40-something years. 46 years. Yeah. yeah, I think I went to school with uh, your daughter. Yeah. yeah. Which one? Um, probably Carrie. all of them. Carrie? Carrie, Carrie yeah. I think Carrie graduated a little before me. Okay. Fran, um, did you see any issues with this? I don't see any issues with it, no. It's, Does it's any of other? It's yeah. an allowable use in the zone. I mean, res rental equipments and supplies. I mean, that's... I mean, as long as the floor, there's no floor drains in there, which I'll do an inspection prior to CO. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Any other questions from any other members of the commission? Do I have a motion? I move that we approve Z-21-35 for 487 Federal Road for rental equipment and sales business. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night and welcome great. back. I know you've been living here, but welcome back your business to the town. Thank, Thank you. you. It's nice to be We're back. Very excited. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Good night, now. You too. Thank you. Good night. All right. So we have an informal discussion on One Tuck Road. Is the uh, fire marshal here? Yep. Yes, I he see is. him online. Can you hear me? Yep. Now we can. Yep. How are you guys? Good. Good. So the the issue we're having at Tucks Road, I don't, I don't, I mean, it's, you know, it it it's not really an issue yet, um, other than the fact that the uh, the gentleman owns a property, bought it as apartments, and sometimes in sometime in the interim, I'd say. 10, 15 years ago, he switched it over to a boarding house, which is a significantly different use that comes with a, a different set of problems all on its own. The fire department, ambulance is quite familiar with it. The issue we're having now is uh, in a not so recent uh, inspection we did, there were several violations that presented themselves as uh, potentially very dangerous for anyone that goes in. The fire marshal doesn't have much as far as, in, well, we can enforce the, the issue there, but we don't have teeth after that. Um, 
His choice for that is to either fix them or go through a modification process with the state, went through the modification, it got shot down, and now it's through a, uh, a reevaluation, they're calling it, and not an appeal because it's beyond the window of the appeal. It's just a reevaluation. And my concern is if he wins this, wins this reevaluation or a portion thereof, then we have no teeth. And like I said, it, it, it poses a significantly uh, dangerous, you know, potentially dangerous situation for first responders, ambulance, fire, police, whatever. Um, I'm talking to Fran, I don't, I don't know uh, what, what exactly it's zoned as, but um, you know, if, if the board would be able to help us out at all with this, Eric, I, I'm going to read a e a e a letter that was written July 9, 2007. So if everybody could bear with me a little bit, it was 2007. You said 2007. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was written by uh, to Christy uh, McPadden, who was a CEO at the time, the town of Brookfield. Uh, Dear Christy, I'm writing this letter. I hope uh, to set the record straight on the property located at One Tux Road in Brookfield. My husband and I purchased this property in 1959. I owned it until I sold it to Ernest Luis in 2000, or 2001. When we purchased, purchased it, it was a store on the bottom known as Collins News, a two-bedroom apartment on the second floor, a one-bedroom apartment on the third floor, and on the top floor, a huge attic with 12 dormers. In the early 1970s, we put one bedroom apartment in the attic and altered the roof line in the back so that there would be a private way to reach it. My son lived there in that unit for a number of years. The building or, uh, origin as are as a hotel for the railroad station built in the early 1900s. That is how the historical society has it listed but sometime prior to 1950 or in the 30s uh, or 40s when passengers were not using the railway station as much, the use as a hotel was abandoned and the apartments were made. The parking lot in the front of the commercial space with a driveway going up around the side of the building with the driveway was, uh, was only one card wide. There was a buffer of trees and shrubs between the driveway and the railroad tracks and the landscape that belonged to the Housatonic Railroad. This is the way I lived in the property for many years, the way it was, they sold it to Mr. Luis. Just after the property was sold, Mr. Luis uh, was living there and renting my apartment back from short term uh, time because my condo was not ready. During that time, Mr. Uh, Lewis constructed walls and divided rooms. So what he did was, from what I can see, he intensified the use. You know, it's an intensification. So I, I don't know what teeth we got, but with the intensification, you got to remember too, it increases parking. I'm looking at the picture. This is um, Wild Iris. Yeah, that's where Wild Iris was, yeah. Was. Yeah, it, it's I'm a, looking at the picture. It's a bakery up. now beneath. It's a chocolate store and bakery with a uh, 11 individual boarding rooms upstairs uh, wow. spread throughout three floors. Each floor has a cooking area and a bathroom area. There's only one of the 11 rooms that has its own uh, its own bathroom, I believe. I mean, so, you know, it's 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 significantly different in both. NFPA and the ICC, as far as they describe uh, a boarding house and an apartment. And, and, you know, with that comes its own separate set of codes that the states, you know, uh, adopted. Uh, Eric, that's into that portion of One Tuck Rose in the TCD. Uh, as you go further in, it goes into the Gateway North. That's, that's not allowed in the TCD, though. I would say if the use change, like from an apartment to a boarding house, uh, I would say you're right. Uh, I'd have to look at the table, but I'm not sure if we allow boarding houses anywhere. I don't think, I, here's the thing. I got to take a look too. I don't even think we have the definition of boarding house, do we? I haven't seen it. I don't think so. I, I, I gave so one either. to Fran the other day. What, uh, 
how it's how it's described in NFPA, and that's also what the states adopted as a definition of a boarding house. Yeah, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to take a look at it because here's the thing, you know, it, if it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck. It's a duck, and the duck don't belong there. We got to figure out underneath our regs um, why the duck's not there. And you know, I'm actually surprised because I went over all the regs. You know, it might have been it slipped us when we were doing the regs because I think you were part of it, Kurt. Um, we have no boarding houses, and I, I don't remember even talking about boarding houses or the such. No, during no, no, and, and, rewriting. And since we're uh, permissive um, zoning regs, if it's not in the regs, it's not permitted. Exactly. So, and, and and definitions. If we don't have a definition, we fall back to like Webster's or Oxford. So, or or in this case, um, what the uh, fireman code says, you know, for what a boarding house is. I mean, on the surface, it sounds dangerous, you know, to have all that up on the third floor. Is it on the third floor, uh, Jason? It's on the top three floors, right, Jason? It's on the it's on the top three floors. And the issue for us was uh, rescue windows or secondary means of escape and uh, means of egress. He has a, door, a hallway that doesn't meet minimum uh, ceiling height, nor does it meet the, the door width. And, you know, we've brought it up. I've asked him to, to apply for permits for change of use. And he's gone to the state several times, um, you know. And, and like I said, we, we're not. It, it it hasn't been accepted by the state yet, but uh, they've gone back a couple times. And and my my thing is, I don't have any teeth once they issue a modification, other than saying, "Hey, you know, a, apply for a permit." If he says no, then it's up to zoning and building, and and that's where the state and you know, the issues with uh what we can and can't do come in. So, you know, I, I was looking for some help, you know, from the town to try to avoid all that later on. Uh, no, and, and I appreciate you coming to us, Jason, because I'm looking at that fourth floor, which is relatively just a roof with a bunch of dog sheds. Um, and honestly, I don't know how you guys would attack or get a, get a person out of there unless they were under a hundred pounds. Well, that, that, that um, was the problem. You know, that one of the, uh, one of the modification requests was, um, to go beyond the, the allowable 20 feet for a rescue window. And then the other one has to do with the size of a door. I mean, you're talking a door that they have there. It's, it's about 23 inches. And code says it's 28. So they're hoping for a modification and that, that's in the state's hands. You know, we wrote besides just, not, you know, checking, not supporting it on the modification request itself. I made a couple of calls. Uh, Mike and I wrote a letter on behalf of the fire marshal's office. And then we had Andy write a letter on behalf of the chief. But, uh, you know, I, uh, other than that, it's it's up to the state. And then there's, you know, the appeals process for us. But um, if we can avoid all that, you know, my argument to the state was, how can you, how can you modify something that's not permitted in its current use? Mm -hmm. You know, and I get crickets, so. All right, so we're, what we're going to do, Jason, we're going to take a look at our own regs and um, see what we need to do. And this has been the time, this last, uh, it's been about the last year and a half, we've been cleaning up the new regs too, because we see that we missed some things. Um, and we might have just completely missed uh, the boarding houses and, and the like, or they fall under something that we're just not thinking about right now. Uh, the only you thing know, boarding thinking, houses aren't, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's, that's gonna say, the only thing I see anywhere in definitions under dwellings, there's several types of dwellings. And then it defines a dwelling unit, which is one or more rooms in a residential structure, which room or rooms is or are, arranged, designed, used, or altered for use by one family, said room or rooms containing kitchen or kitchen area and bathroom with bathtub and or shower, toilet and sink. The term shall not be deemed to include units in a hotel, motel, or rooming house. It's yeah, so, you know, the, the state the state recognizes a boarding house, you know, as a, uh, consistent with that of a rooming house and then um you know I, I think the other thing it's just it's it's something that's not common in, in brookfield i mean you know you see it in it's, bridgeport maybe danbury waterbury but it's, right. it's nothing you really see in brookfield too often so well and when you see it in danbury it's not usually legal um <laughs> right I, I'm, I'm at a loss uh maybe you can help me out with this kurt what's the difference between a rooming house and a boarding house 
Uh, to me, I would say there's no difference, you know? I agree. Jason, did you find out anything that they told you is difference between a rooming house and a boarding house? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the code reads rooming house and boarding house. I, I don't have it in front of me, but uh, it's something I can easily get for you. Okay, because what you read, Mary, is at least we have the word rooming house. Yeah, that's the only place I see it anywhere. Yeah. I think, Kurt, we had the ability at one time to go through our entire regs to look for that word, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I can uh, I can scan it on PDF, sure. <laughs> All right, so Jason, uh, basically, thank you for bringing that to our attention. I looked at the building and I, I have no clue to how eleven families. You said eleven different rooms. So it's a, yes, it's eleven rooms. So um, eleven, and like I said, four. each floor has its has a, a a cooking area versus a true apartment. And, and that fourth floor just you know looks looks extremely dangerous anyways to try and get anybody in or out of there. And I still remember, um, I think it was about eight or nine years ago, there was a house on uh, on um, what's going up through New Milford, Route 7, uh, getting towards Gaylordsville Fire Department. And they couldn't get the guy out of the second floor. So they had to cut a hole in the uh, side of the house to remove him um, after yep. he had a heart attack. And basically he didn't make it anyways because of that whole thing. The last thing I'm going to see is a house in Brookfield where we have people going up because you can't rescue them. You can't get them out. And looking at those windows on that fourth floor is extremely concerning. I mean, we, we did numerous fatals when I was with the fire explosion unit with the state police. And that's, you know, that, that's what draws my uh, attention to this. And actually, I, I just pulled up the definition on NFPA. If you want me to read it to you. Can you? Sure. It's uh. 6.1.8.1.2 and it says lodging or rooming house a building or portion thereof that does not qualify as a one or two family dwelling that provides sleeping accommodations for a total of 16 or fewer people on a transient or permanent basis without personal care services with or without meals but without separate cooking facilities for individual occupants and then uh, an apartment building is described as a building or apartment or portion thereof containing three or more dwelling units with independent cooking and bathroom facilities. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, the, the big difference there is your, uh, you know, your facilities for uh, personal care and things like that, bathrooms or, or kitchens, you know, and, and then here it's, it's, it's rented on a, usually a weekly or monthly basis. I think this place is, rented on a weekly basis. And I, I'm pretty sure there was a letter in the file that I saw at some point that spoke about uh, the rents collected. I mean, I haven't been in the office in a while, I've been out in military leave, but I've been following through with this one. Yeah, and, and what um, you said, Kurt, earlier is like our TCD district is very specific on what we allow. I mean, to the point where, you know, we used to have caretaker residents if it was gonna be over this size square footage. And everything else so there's no way that this could possibly fall in what we have is allowed um right. yeah so i mean you know we got to figure out what our what our next step is going to be on this. i would say it would be an illegal rooming house and and just to add another uh, pit of information normally if you have a residence you can rent out two of your bedrooms for other people so that's yeah. that's like the size, the largest size we can have of a rooming house, but it's got to be a single family residence that you, you rent out two other rooms to max. And, uh, and this obviously is much more than that. So you have what, 12 or maybe six people per floor that share the common uh, food area and stuff. It sounds like, so, you know, is it sounds there, like oh, we work. <laughs> Jason, is there, um, does there look like it's a multifamily or does it look like the top three is a single family as a rooming house? I, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a mixed, it's a mixed use building itself. Like I said, you know, it's commercial on the bottom, right? It's set, it was set up and, and still is set up as three individual apartments. But, um, you know, he, he kind of changed the, uh, individual rooms of the apartments into bedrooms and then, you know, he put a couple extra stairways and stuff like that. So, so is there know, three kitchens? Uh, there's, there's three kitchens, one on each floor. And I, I think, I'm not sure, 
one of the units upstairs might have its own individual. I, I forgot since I've been in there last. So at, at most we're looking at either three individual residences that share uh, a place, which means you can have three renters or you can have one single family house renting out two bedrooms, which again, leaves you with three. Right. And, and when he purchased it and uh, you know, what he purchased it as, and he'll even tell you, it was uh, three apartments above one commercial unit. On the and bottom. that's allowed in the TC. Right. That is allowed. Okay. Um, Fran, I, I know we have a list of multifamilies. Is that on our list? I don't have that list in front of me. I'd have to look right. in uh, tomorrow. Well, I, I would say, I'd like to see what the list says. Hmm. Yeah. This is a change of use too. Even if it wasn't on the list, this change of use from a three, uh, three apartment uh, house or whatever to a rooming board. You know, a rooming um, board on the first, second, and third floors. You know, I would say it's illegal and not allowed well, by regulation. Well, and I'm still wondering if that third floor is even even legal or you know for for safety concerns i mean just oh yeah, if I'm, as, yeah right as three i mean you know i i remember a couple of years ago when we were somebody on um federal road there above uh mattress was it fran the mattress king they wanted to put those uh apartments up there and there was a lot of issue and a lot of problem because of safety yeah and, yeah you know it's like here if they're pre-existing okay but it's got to be pre-existing and and to what the town allowed i don't know if the town ever allowed that top floor. I don't know if you pulled up the picture of that building, but if you look at that top floor, I mean, the only way to get out of there. Yeah. Look at that top floor. It's, it's literally a roof with dog shed dormers. I think that he gave up the pre-existing argument when he made the modifications. I see this as someone who bought a property, violated our zoning regs, and we're just finding out about it now. So I was concerned about the pre-existing issue in the beginning, but I don't see it that way anymore now that we're aware of all the modifications that were made. So um, right. I don't know how the commission wants to move forward if, uh, if, if we want There is see. one other issue with this too that I don't, I mean, it's not an issue right now, but he's, he's tried to sell it. So when we first, when he first went through the modification process and we, you know, this is actually when we first abated him with the issues over a year ago, we went into the clerk's office and I put notes in the field card because I, I felt like he was going to sell it, you know, just based on my interaction with him. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, a couple months ago, I got contacted by a potential buyer and I told him all the issues. And then this is why I want to bring it up now, because if it does get approved through modification or if it doesn't, you know, are we going to go through this all over again with a buyer, you know, and, and he or she says, oh, well, I bought it as a, a boarding house. Uh, Jason, how did you find out about it? Was it just during a regular inspection and then you happened to look upstairs? Well, I mean, we, we, we do all the, the bedrooms in the inspection. I, I knew we inspected it as a boarding house, but then, you know, looking through the file, I realized that there was nothing in there that he ever applied for a permit as a change of use from an apartment to a rooming or boarding house. And then it, it just kept on snowballing from there. Hmm. And if I look on realtor.com, it says a unique investment opportunity. It's, it's listed um, currently a boarding house with 12 bedrooms, five bathrooms and three uh, kitchens. And they rent each room for about 140 to 160 per week. So if it's on Coldwell Bank or realtor.com, it was either listed, it is listed, but they're not putting a lot of facts on there, but he actually has 12 bedrooms. And he's listing it as a boarding house. So, And as a commission, now that we're aware of the issue, I would hate for there to be a fire and some people die in that building and we didn't do something about it. So I'm, I feel like I want to take this very seriously. I'm not saying nobody else does, but I, I want to take action here as soon as possible. I've pushed that issue with the state too. You know, being that it's, it's not a true uh, appeal because it's beyond the time they're, they're calling it a reevaluation. My, my question to the state was that same thing. If something happens, who's taking original jurisdiction? Who's uh, the liability falling under? And mm -hmm. I, I really don't want this to come into uh, our hands, you know, because I've been part of the 
wrongful death suits and stuff like that, and they get pretty ugly. Well, now, Jason, you just brought us into it, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, M- misery so- loves company. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Tony, do you want to take the lead on this one to um, work with Fran on – on what we need to do in order to um, uh, define how we how we go and tell them that this is not allowable use in this area and go to cease and desist and terminate everything to get them on our uh, yeah I, I don't mind doing that uh, yeah I'll do that man, would that minute. work yeah yeah that's fine yeah because what I want to make sure we do we do it in the correct way yeah and identify yeah. in the in the absolute correct way before I like I don't want to make any motion tonight because yeah, I don't want to. I want to research it first to see under which, which one we do it to go. But obviously, Tony, you're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. We need to, um, we need to address this because now that Jason brought us into the loop, now we're, we're mm-hmm. part of what you would call the conspiracy if we let this just go on. <laughs> so again, thanks, Jason. No problem. And I mean, if you need anything else with us, I mean, on a serious note, let me know uh, as far as inspection notes, modifications, stuff like that, you know, He's got a, an engineer and a cold consultant in the loop in the state. State obviously is well aware of what's going on and, and what we're fighting. And I actually told them, I said, I, I, I planned on bringing it, you know, to your attention in the near future. So do you, do you know if they turned in a, um, a bedroom living plan anywhere? They, they did uh, not, not so much a living plan, but they, they uh, submitted a drawing and then the other problem with the drawing is the drawing really wasn't a true and accurate representation of its current condition. So I, I think that's going to, uh, you know, create some issues as well. Well, at least if you can get that to us, that would be uh, that would be a good start, right? Antonio? I'll email everything I have over to Fran, and okay. then uh, you know, if he needs anything, you need anything, let me know. I'll meet up with you or, or get whatever we have. Tony, is there anything else you want to you want to get from I, him or see? I just want to know. All, all the violations that are, that you've seen, Jason, and then any modifications that you're aware of. I think the modifications are key on our end. So uh, we know it was a, a three apartment building, but a, stairs that were added, if there's any proof of when the modifications were done, anything like that, it would be good to have that for our file. Yeah, we have a lot of that in our, the fire marshal's file. So we'll pull all that and get it over to Fran. Beautiful yeah, because I imagine, like what you're saying, Tony, I imagine after the fact they added walls because that's usually what they do. Some, some were done legitimately uh, with, with plans. Some were done through the modification process with the state. But uh, I think over time, like Fran said, it's just intensified and he's changed that use and, you know, he's, he's been able to skirt the, the permit process while doing so. Okay. Well, thanks, Jason, for uh, for coming. And if you need anything, you know, feel free to reach out to um, Tony, Fran, or myself, and we'll make sure that we stay on top of this because we would hate for something to happen yep. and then for you guys to go over there and just have a whole bunch of trouble. That's just not – it's not fair to anybody to include the occupants or the fire department. I, I appreciate it, and I know the fire department will too. All right. Is there anything else, Jason? No, that's it. Thanks very much. Right. Thanks, Jason, for coming thanks, tonight. Jason. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'll talk to you. Okay. All right, Fran. Um, do we have anything else that we're going to uh, informals? Uh, yeah, we have. Uh, um, well, we have Dan Bertram here is president for 468 Federal Road. That's uh, Brookfield Muse. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead, Dan. Hi, everyone. It's hard to hard to say hi and then let people say hi back in this forum, but it's, I appreciate uh, coming in and being able to talk about something that frankly, I just called Fran about um, in the last 48 hours probably. So uh, this is, it's, it's nice to um, be able to come in and talk directly with the commission. Not all municipalities allow that. So that's really, I think a good process. So the reason I'm here is because we were looking at the um, approval that had been issued on this parcel that was uh, 112 units um, under 8-30G. And I had called Fran because we were looking at it in the context of a potential expansion of um, Farmbeck Place. At least that's kind of how I'm conceptually looking at it. 
the dissection of the approved plan when we sat down and looked at it was um, such that we saw um, basically a heavy weighting towards um, two bedroom units and then the remainder are one bedroom. And some of the units themselves are quite large. And if you make them too big, it's very hard to make the economics work on the um, income uh, constrained units, right? So you have a 60% AMI, 80% AMI. And so as we were looking at it to do feasibility analysis, um, and actually I'll say on that topic, the construction cost issues that uh, are going on right now make it that much more difficult to build any affordable housing because these things are tied to um, prevailing wage, you know, the, the wages in an area that don't move as quickly as maybe market rents might in an inflationary period. So anyway, long story short, we were looking at this. I called Fran and started asking him 16 questions. And <laughs> um, the uh, gist of it though, was that in breaking down the approval and I, um, I let me ask, is this, is this fresh in everyone's mind or should I share I, my I screen on what? I believe uh, that only me and Tony were on the commission at that time. Oh, okay. So then, um, is it possible oh, on the share my screen? I might be able to throw up a, a plan. Okay. Um, so I think I have to be allowed to. That says um, host. Allison, can you let Dan uh, share the screen for Dan? Yep, I'm going to make you a co-host right now. Thank right. you. Okay. Thank you. And can you tell everybody where this is located? Yep. Yep. I'll. Uh... You should be all set when you're ready. Great. Thank you, Allison. So let me go to it. So if we're looking at this, there's there's a new retail center, right? At, right, right through here. Um, this is that's, an undeveloped the lot. With the, um, what, what's the name of the restaurant that's in there? The Italian restaurant? Yeah, I was El just- Primo. Last El week Primo. El Primo. Just right. so everyone knows, this is behind El Primo. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. And so there's a big grade change as you come in for, you know, the, the federal road level and then up as it transitions into the back. And there are um, essentially these buildings labeled A through um, H here, five in the middle, and then another um, three on the sides. This is, this is a building here, H and F. So across that, it has this um, unit count I was talking about. It's 112 units total that were approved. And so what we did is we looked at it and kind of broke it down and said, well, how does this get buildable? Um, I, I applaud Brookfield in, the, in, in doing things for affordable housing um, that your peers don't do. <laughs> I can say that as a, an industry guy. Um, and, you know, from the standpoint of kind of completing the mission, if you will, in terms of allocating, um, you know, land for a affordable housing. We're, we're looking at this and saying, okay, in the 112 units um, that are accessed, again, through here is the entrance, this comes through, and I, I believe this is more of an emergency thing on the, on the backside. You have um, the area defined for development, but the buildings themselves in aggregate, and I'll throw a few numbers at you, um, in terms of rentable square feet, there's 109,000 square feet that's approved and 186 bedrooms. Now, that's again in 112 units. At Barnbeck, where we built that um, just off the screen here, this is the Nordex parcel, right? Where my uh, hand is, if that is that coming through, okay? Okay, so then, Going south on Federal Road, there would be um, Barnbeck North that is shared uh, an entrance with Nordex, and then the, the south building, which is that, that U-shaped building that goes up against the Greenville Professional Center, and the barn, of course, itself in between the two. The, so the proximity is, is, is good from the standpoint of um, connecting it with that 
complex if, uh, if it's made economically feasible to proceed. So what I had called Fran about was to say, well, when we look at this and we look at the unit mix that we had created at, at um, Farmbeck, we have a weighting towards studio and one bedrooms and then a, um, uh, I think only 30% of the allocation is to two bedrooms on that approval. And so we have 213 total bedrooms apply, uh, approved for the 165 units at Barnbeck. And that doesn't actually end up generating a ton of school aged children because you don't get a lot of families in product types of, of studios and one bedrooms. And so we were looking at this from the standpoint of both providing more affordable housing just uh, in, in general, that's one of our missions, but um, also trying to make it as you know, digestible for the municipality. And so the reason that we asked about um, the potential for taking and maybe making the, the gross constraints, the area of buildable um, product, the number of bedrooms, you know, and then working within that type of a structure and making for a unit mix like what we had done at Barnbeck. And Barnbeck, by the way, was approved under incentive housing. And um, that was, you know, with the 20% set aside tied to the 80% area median income. And we knew that as we were going in and design product to, um, to, to, to work within those constraints. Here, the reason that we're, we're coming to the commission and I would normally have a little more together. I don't, I don't usually get to be in front of a commission within 48 hours of reaching out. <laughs> so again, thank you. Um, but I, yeah, I figured at a high level, we could talk through it and see if there was an appetite because the analysis that we did is if we took the same type of unit mixing that we did at Farmback, use the same allocated areas um, that we could essentially come up with a 137 units that would be of, uh, in the same proportionality would be 30 studios, 68 one bedrooms and, um, and 39 two bedrooms. And so what I was saying to Fran was this as a trade-off as it relates to impact on schools, you're going from actually um, 74 uh, two bedrooms to down to 39. And, um, but the unit counts are going up. So there are actually more affordable housing units being created overall. And um, to me, it can be kind of a win, win, win in terms of getting the economics to work and, um, you know, basically to satisfy some of the, the broader goals here, um, societally, if you will, um, but, you know, doing it in a measured way. And so that was a question, number one to Fran, but also then, um, I don't know if Neil's still listening, but I called him to ask because he and I, um, you know, we've done a lot of stuff over the years, uh, Neil Marcus, and uh, just, you know, just asked about um, whether or not it was even something that the commission could do. And I believe that he, he spoke with Tom Beecher and Tom Beecher kind of kicked him back over um, a little bit back to his firm. There's some, there's some different roles being played on, uh, I guess, the extension of the moratorium and stuff that's in place. But as I understand it, from a legal perspective, um, modifying an existing approval uh, does not open that up. And I, again, I defer to lawyers on this, but I believe that that box has been checked and therefore it made sense to come in and just ask the commissions for feedback on their appetite to pursue kind of a right sizing exercise like this. Um, but, you know, in, in a nutshell, that's why I'm, why I'm here. All right, so you're looking at going from 112 units to 137 units. You said that the old footprint was 109,000 square feet. Yeah, and then and it, and that's now the metrics that I, I usually track are like uh, rentable square feet. So that's that that's a metric along those lines. In in the 137, it would be um, this the, the same. It's 109,480. Um, 
So you're looking at doing more units with the same square footage of building. Same square footage, the parking counts. Um, I think we have 206 units, uh, excuse me, 206 parking spaces uh, that are provided in the existing approval. And again, with that unit mix, because it's a uh, one per studio, one and a half per um, uh, one bedroom, and then two per two, we have 210 that are required. So, so we tried to keep all the relevant global metrics um, consistent. So we weren't actually pushing it because again, it's a challenging site as it relates to it being up across the back on top really of that retail center. Um, yeah. I remember um, when we, when we heard the applicant multiple times on this one, we, um, and Tony, you can, you can weigh in on this as well. I remember us saying, wow, you know what? We'll give you credit. You were very ingenious for completely building out this strip of land like literally they they made every usable use of every piece um sure. and we had a lot of neighbors from green knoll looking down at that and having a serious complaint um with it and so when you were saying hey listen you know it was 109,000 square feet at 112 units i actually helped you i was hoping you were going to tell me that the overall square footage was going to be less mm. than what it sure. is now. So you're asking us, hey, listen, there was approved for 112 units over 109,000 square feet. I get it. The cost of building material has soared. Um, and I understand that. But now you're asking us to come back for 137 units with the same amount of um, square footage of building. I can only imagine what those neighbors are now going to say to us because they were ready ready upset with my commission well at that time it wasn't even my commission um but they were upset with the commission for us even entertaining um so i think you're gonna have a little bit of a battle there um because yeah you know, and, I, and I don't, i'm the new guy i don't want any battles with anybody <laughs> right even with this commission no. i'm talking about with the neighbors and everything because I'm, I'm just telling you what happened last time sure. i'm not raining in on anything that this commission will do and i'm just saying what Green Oil, the, the people in Green Oil said, and um, and the the fight back that the developer had from just the residents and the neighbors, um, and now you're you know you want to go back and say, hey, listen, now I want to up the units, twenty five units over the same building, um, and you're saying, you know, listen, I want to do a, a give and take or a win win situation. But I don't know how that's a win situation for us when we approved 112 units to 109,000 square feet. Now you're asking for 137 units at 109,000 square feet. So the only thing I want to know is how is that a win for the town? Um, as it relates to the resulting cost of educating the children who live within the community, when you go, I think I would highlight the metric of going from 74 two bedrooms down to 39. That's a very substantial um, second bedroom reduction, if you will. And so what you're doing is you're providing more units, but in the form of the studios and the ones. And so the, the, the traffic impact is um, de minimis because it's, it's tied to the unit types. Um, and these were the four larger units. And in terms of the neighbors, we can be working within the, um, the areas where the buildings are because we're not actually claiming more space. So I think that when traffic on um, Federal Road, we can have a traffic engineer come in and, and, and show how this would not really function any differently. And it's, it's a little bit intimated that way, just with the difference between you know, 206 versus 210 parking spaces. Um, that gives a little guidance on where that traffic report will come in. But, um, but I think from a neighbor's perspective, it's, uh, it's the same deal because they're looking at the same mass of building that they were before. And from the standpoint of the operating cash flow side of it, yeah, I think we could probably come in and say what the difference between the 74 and 39 um, you know, units would, 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 would turn out for uh, yearly child education type stuff. Uh, we, we can definitely make an economic case anyway. 
Um, whether or not that, where that measures in the, in the town's goals is why we come in and try to talk informally to a commission and know what they're, what they're, lo what they're looking for. Hi, uh, this is Kurt Timmerman. Sure, so sure. plainly speaking, you're basically saying there'll be fewer school kids generated by the singles than the doubles you used to have. And therefore we have a lower education cost, but then you just, also, you just want to reconfigure the inside of the buildings to change you know, the mix. That's correct. And, and the units need to get smaller based on, again, that construction cost thing. And then the, uh, the, the, the rents that can be charged for them to service the, the cost of creating them. And so at that 60% slice, um, you, you need a correspondingly similar number of market rate to just be able to afford them, right? And that's one of the things that drives the density bonus um, in the affordable housing law. But, but again, I'm, I am just coming in as a guy who's looking at it saying, we could do something on this, uh, but only in a certain way. And does the town have an appetite for it? But I, I do believe we have, we have economic arguments we can make that are, that are sound. And, and, and again, we've come back with a, a real proposal um, as opposed to a, Hey, friend, how I catch up the call and, uh, <laughs> oh, wait, all right, I'll come in and talk. <laughs> because if, if there's something where it's like, whoa, wait a minute, you know, you got, the, the, the approval is what it is, then that's a message for me too, right? And, uh, and then I probably go on to do something else, right? But, uh, but this in a certain way might, uh, might work on our side. So that's why we're asking. I can see the positives of, of both. I think the community is always worried about overcrowding in our schools. Sure. Um, and you said this would be more affordable housing, which I, I believe is important. Yeah, yeah another 25 uh, units uh, of, uh, well, uh, overall, and then it's, I guess it's 30% of the 25 that would be the additional. Affordable. Right, yeah. right. And I, I believe that's important. So, um, you know, Eric, to your point, I wasn't on the commission then, so I don't know, but I imagine the neighbors probably just didn't want the building there at all didn't really have anything to do with size or well, people, it, it, how many people. It kind of had to do with size and heights. Okay. Um, and they, they, they came in with, and they made a, the, the, you know, I, I get it. Neighbors don't want to see stuff and see yes. things, but the problem with, with the one that they did, that's why we said it was ingenious because they really fully, fully took it and built out the complete lot, wherever they can put an anthill, it was put there. Um, and it was not, you know, even among the commission at that point, we were like, could you give us a little something? Could you just like, you know, wind it down a little bit? And they came back and they threw more houses. They took out a little pond in the middle and a horseshoe and threw another, more houses up. And I just remember it leaving. And, and you had nothing to do with this, Dan. Yeah, right, right. right sure. Bad taste on our commission because it was like they didn't pay attention. A lot of times when builders come in, they pay attention to the neighbors. They pay attention to the commission. And it's a win-win, like you said, Dan, it's a win-win deal where, all right, you know what? I understand you got these costs and especially now you got the cost building material. I mean, a two by four is $9 for crying out loud. Yeah, it's, amazing. it's incredible. I, I can't believe we're in a time where it's almost cheaper to build with steel than it is to build with, build with wood. But, you know, and that's the constraints you have upon us or upon you. And, you know, but the last person that came in, they just wanted to keep building and building. Fire wanted a, a fire route around. They did the de minimis where we had other builders come in and they're like, listen, we want to work with you. We felt, and again, it wasn't you, Dan. We felt when this one happened, they were not willing to work with us at all. They didn't really care what the neighbors had to say. They didn't care what the commission had to say. They just wanted to put every anthill they can possibly put in there and then leave. Yeah. And they didn't care. L at least that was my feeling. I don't know um, what yours was during that time, Tony, but that was my feeling. Um, so I would have liked to see this site just, you know, wane down a little bit. Like, you know, I was hoping, literally hoping you're saying, hey, listen, I'm still going to do 112 units. <laughs> I'm just going to do less square footage because building material is cheaper. It makes more sense to build less. I do have a, um, I guess another thing I can throw out here concept wise. Um, like I'm not willing to, uh, I get myself in trouble talking about it. this is probably a recorded thing and it'll live and live on forever but I don't want to pick on my own family but I came from a building family right and uh, our, our organization had to evolve over time based on the area of demands and stuff so I 
I try to build a much better product over time as the markets evolved. And, um, and, and, and I guess uh, we could do a poll, I guess, on whether or not we succeeded with Barnbeck, but I'm happy with what we pulled off at Barnbeck. So where I, I guess I'm going with that is that I'm really not interested in coming onto this part and taking down some of the exterior look of the buildings but I'm not sure that everybody who looks at the site that way won't just be willing to put up a box, right? And, and that's a little bit, not to be too harsh, but that's a little bit, it, it's, it's a little basic in its uh, delivery of the size. I think that can be um, refined and, and delivered on better. Um, it's not like density just has to be unattractive. So I think there's some bells and whistles types of things on the exteriors that um, maybe we would bring to the table that's evidenced by the existing um, Barnbeck place because uh, we would only want to do it if it was consistent with that look. We didn't mention that there was issues with the front property owner as well. Um, I remember there was a, some legal battle over that easement and the extent of it being used. So you may be opening up that can of worms by adding more units because you're, however much you're increasing the use, you're increasing the use. That's just something for your information to look at. But sure, literally no, from, uh, the only end that didn't have opposition was the side with the people who weren't living anymore. So <laughs> I, uh, I have PTSD from this property, honestly. It was, it was a little rough. And yeah. um, it, at that time, though, there was a lot of this going on. And, and as a commission, we're elected officials. And we heard it from a lot of people. And I've been sort of scared honestly, driving down the road when I see that beautiful front property to imagine that construction will start in the back and people will look at us and say, what did you do? Because it's just such a unique situation there. So yeah, uh, I can tell you, I would have hesitation increasing it just from my memory of it and all the issues mentioned. Um, this one was a, a rough one. No, I, I, so I, I, ho I hope I... Um... This, the only risk you run in coming in just to talk concept is mm -hmm. that it sometimes helps to show how you can deliver it. Mm -hmm. And so if, if perhaps we could, you know, put a pin in this on some level in that if we, if we kind of conceptually high level agree that it's possible, right, then maybe what makes sense for me to come back with at your next meeting is to show how it could be delivered, what the assumptions would be, what's approved now, and it's going to be similar, almost identical to the footprint. Um, and then, then we can kind of make the before and after comparison. That, that, that might be at least a way to further explore it. And then we can say, hey, listen, let somebody else come up and put up some boxes there whenever they get around to doing it. And, uh, and, and I don't have anything to do with it. And I'm, I'm clean, right? <laughs> but... But, but sometimes showing specifically how the space could be delivered is, um, well, it's always helpful, actually. Um, so. Well, here's the good news and the bad news, Dan. You only have, here's the good news. There's only two of us that were left from. <laughs> that, was, uh, that, was, that was some food that was, that was really shoved down our throat. And the builder that came in, the applicant that came in, really one of the very few applicants that did, really did not care about what we had to say nor what the townspeople had to say sure. and so you know and i know you're not like that because you did build barn back you did do that so that's that's a beneficial to you because you have a you have a good rapport um however i'm going to tell you just like tony is i'm very hesitant especially because i remember it was the height of some of those buildings too that when you were looking at it it was now coming up and over at street level it just when you're looking down from Greenall, and then you're looking across from Federal Road, it just really stuck out. And they weren't willing to do anything with us or for us. Matter of fact, when we asked, they said, we'll come back. And they threw more stuff in and took out stuff. It was just, it was, it was very much a very bad experience for this, yeah. for the commission that was uh, pre existing. So the good news is you have a new commission. <laughs> uh, but me and Tony still look at it and go, I remember that. And I just wish that they could have done something a little bit nicer. So when you had your street views from Federal Road and you were looking down on it, it, it just wasn't so 
like when I say anthills, I really mean it looks like they were just throwing up anthills. And that's not something I really wanted. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think we're basic. When I say box, right, I'm uh, I, I'm kind of going to the same spot, right? We, we'll call it uninspired design, you know, however we want to look at it. But I think I think that there's probably um, it's not so crazy to think about um, landscaping the front side of you know because there's such a grade change there. I I don't think that approaching the uh, retail center, because I think that there's a, maybe a hundred foot setback between the, because it's a change in zone, right? From that C2 zone to the R80, maybe? That's um, correct. That's correct. Okay. So in that transition on that back bank, there could be some things that get done that sort of um, visually take away from the impact of the, the, the building when you're looking at it. And of course, it'll mature over time and become more so with the plantings. Um, but I think that there's a way to, there's a way to address a bunch of these things. I, I mean, I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm, I, again, I'm the new guy, but I, I, I see how to address some of these concerns that we would do as a matter of course, right. Um, that maybe others want it. And so, so I think it's why I maybe would say, um, maybe we could give you a before and after. And, and if, if we got into a landscape plan where we said, okay, you're right, maybe they, it is stiff arm you on beautifying the the look of it from downhill. You know, you, you need people to feel good about when they're coming into their home, right? And so we care about the approach as you come up through through this uh, the, this easement area where the main entrance is. And I mean that's that's just good business. It's good for everybody, right? All the stakeholders. So I I think that there there might be a program that we won't go below that is helpful to that situation, even while, you know, keeping the density up enough to make the economics work because it's, it, it, it is tricky. You're, it's a fork in the road to keep the quality up, right? You got to make them smaller and, and make them nicer, or you just leave them big and simplistic and it gets, it gets built, but it's not, I'm not that guy. I, it won't be me, right? Um, but but somebody will probably, you know, proceed with developing it. Um, so so I guess I guess that's the that's the question. Should we do an exercise, a planning exercise, to say how would we deliver this space? How would we make it look consistent with Barnbeck? Because that's the only context in which I'm looking at it. Through it's not like oh this would look and feel like a you know it, when an operator is a different property, it'd be you know tied into that. So it's got to it's got to maintain that standard set um, visually. I think it's possible to do. I just need to do a little work to show you. And what what about any of the newer commissioners um, that are not so jaded about this parcel? Well, I was just gonna say I I'm sure that sounds great. And Eric and Tony will probably have some business out of town that they have to go to and can't make the meeting that night. <laughs> well, you know. Um, uh, as Dan mentioned, it might be nice to see the before for the rest of us commission members to see what it did look like and the after um, to give us a sense of how how bad was it for, from an elevation visual view. Uh, I, know, I know that wetlands made them do a lot of changes on this, um, but you know if it's if it's a distasteful design right now, then maybe anything to do to make it better would be a good thing, you know. In yeah, I'm, I'm not willing to build what's approved. I mean, I can say that black and white. Even if the numbers worked, I want to build it. And I don't want to be mean to anybody. I'm just telling you my analysis. Hey, well, Eric, it's, it's Neil glad. Marcus. Can I, can I uh, comment on this for a brief second? Because uh, my yep. perspective is pretty interesting. I was at all your meetings when Al Matakow and Peter Scott were presenting this project. So I, I listened to it go in and I, I, and I'm listening to you now comment on, on how that went and, and you're, you're right. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a somewhat torturous process. I also represent Manny Menino who owns the shopping center in front. Mm -hmm. And we worked out what you said was the litigation over the easement. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, was a little bit torturous, but it worked out. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
going back many years ago, Dan Bertram came to me and told me he was going to do this Barnbeck uh, property. And I did some wetlands work for him. And I tell you, Dan has made a point of making me feel stupid about some of my thinking on, a, on the projects because I thought Barnbeck was a way too ambitious project. And I, I was wrong. He did it and he did it right. It's been very successful. So when Dan talked to me about what I thought about the change of the unit mix and everything, I, I got to tell you here, I'm not going to say I'm not sure that's a good idea because I got to tell you, his idea is actually correct. The market that Al and Peter were designing for years ago is much different today, A, because of just the market dynamics, and B, as we said, uh, the fact that construction costs are up almost 300% in the last year and a half uh, or so. So I, I'm i listening here, and I'm also thinking that we got the original moratorium, uh, we being my, my law firm, uh, Robin Kahn, and we are now working on extending the moratorium uh, on 8-30G. And Dan's question was, is that moratorium going to be a problem for doing a new unit mix? Because we're going to add eight or so new affordable units. And to the contrary, the, the moratorium does, <laughs> protects the commission from having to take 8-30G applications during the moratorium. Nobody can force you to hear them. But right. the moratorium is not to discourage a town from creating affordable housing. To the contrary, when you go in to extend the moratorium, the best argument you have is, look what we have done, even though there was a moratorium in place. Right. And right. I, I think that that is just a huge opportunity against the background of what's going on in Hartford today by the desegregate Connecticut movement and the whole movement to basically get rid of local zoning in favor of uh, a more regional uh, statewide zoning. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go into that argument now. No, but I, 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 Neil, you, you know that we have a long working relationship together, and I respect yeah. you. Yeah, and I appreciate if you did not go into the desegregation Connecticut. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You, 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 I don't want to, but but against that whole background, what Dan is proposing here, what he what he ran it by me, I thought actually was a win-win. Uh, a, it changes the mix for school children, which is always a good idea for the local towns who are strapped with the budgets. And, and, and it's just, if you're not changing the footprint, it's a huge uh, uh, selling point too. So I'm going to ask the commission uh, to, to give some serious consideration to this uh, proposal, because I think it works on a bunch of different levels. And I'm back to what Kurt just said. For those of you who never saw the before, you really should see the before and the after. Not that I've seen the after yet, but I've done a lot of projects with Dan. And I know that what he's talking about could be a huge improvement. And I sense that if you went to Manny Menino in the front and said, we would like to improve the streetscape, I don't think Manny would have any, you know, I can't talk for him, but I've known him pretty well. I can't see that he'd have any objective. I think he'd probably agree it's a good idea because if anybody is impacted other than the Green Knoll people, it's of course Manny because he's downgrade. He looks up at it. So they're just all sorts of good thoughts here. To, you know, I, obviously I can't make the decision for the commission but all I can ask you to do is to encourage you to, to consider this because I think it's got some great upside. So thanks for letting me put you know, in my historic you know, perspective. Well, you know, Neil, we, we consider, you, you've, you've known me and in in the commission yeah. now a little bit. You know that we're consider everything. I think, yeah. you know, what I was, and me and Tony were doing was just letting the applicant know. <laughs> oh, that, I appreciate that. Yeah. Is that, you know, here's the feeling we had and what we, we looked at before. And I mean, you know, uh, Commissioner Cordisco is no longer on this commission, but if you would have heard the things that he had to say since he lived up in Green Knoll and when the applicant came in and said certain things and he knew and they pointed out a house, he goes, no, that's not correct. That's my house I lived in. It, it became kind of like, all right. So, you know, it, to me, it's like once one person doesn't tell me the truth, then what am I supposed to believe him on? And that applicant came in 
and just had a series of what I considered fallacies and untruths that I was even worried of what they were going to build out. Um, but, you know, here we have, here we have a new, um, you know, uh, you, you, you have a new perspective look at it. I haven't seen the new one, um, what you propose. I just, you know, see the same 109,000 square feet. I, I saw what the other applicant did before. So I have a hesitancy, but I am, and you can ask Neil, I'm not at all, nor is Tony, closed-minded. We're just letting you know where we stand. And then you have the rest of the commission that's completely open-minded to this parcel because they haven't seen it yet. Yeah, sure, sure. And maybe so, when, if you change the look of it, it'll make me uh, feel better because I've just, I've honestly been concerned what will people say about the commission when that project starts? I, I feel like it, yeah, I've been worried it's going to upset people again when right. it's finally being built. So, And this yeah. is the one Good thing point. I disagree with Neil on. Where, yeah. where Neil, Neil, you're a great arguer. You always have been, and you're very persuasive. But it isn't just about the people on Green Knoll or the restaurant in front. It's everybody that lives in Brookfield and drives past that. Oh, so you bet. that's my concern. Mm -hmm. you, Eric, you are 100% correct. That, that, that site is as a gateway site mm -hmm. into the town center. No question. Mm -hmm. So um, did we at least answer? <laughs> I mean, it kind of got a little convoluted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least I, answer whether or not yeah. you look into I, I might have to sleep on it to answer your question, but <laughs> but I but I kind of do, I think, know what um, needs to be presented to, uh, and I don't think it's, it's one of these things where it's such a clear, oh, that'd be great that uh, I'll come back with a full application. I think I'll come back with some um, a, a, a informally again with it roughed out so we can kind of talk about it. And, and, and I think that the, um, let's see, and, I, and I'll show you some of the other stuff. I mean, there, there's an appropriate way to do buildings with size. I mean, we're building a six-story building at the News Times site right now that's that's taking its mass in Danbury. And um, it's one of these things where I believe we're just keep pushing the level up, right, from what has been developed in recent years in that market because, and I, and I feel guilty, I'll, I'll just kind of share a little bit. I, I recruited Graystar to come to downtown Danbury, but I didn't think to tell them what the outsides had to look like. And so I'm really not very happy with the curb appeal on the 370 some odd units that got built across from where we're now building. But now I see it as an opportunity to, you know, knock everybody's socks off with the building we are building, right? And so we do care about what we're putting up. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's something I think that uh, if, 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 I can, if I can make all the, the numbers work and come back and give you a, maybe a rendering of a typical building or something like that, I'll, I'll see what the team can put together um, and, uh, and just try to bring it to life a little bit more. But I do, nothing you're saying to me makes me, uh, you know, surprises me that much uh, about the, you know, looking at the approval and what the process was getting to it. Um, it's not a very sophisticated approval. I mean, to, for lack of a better way to put it, um, but it could be, you know. And, and here's the one thing I do invite you to do, Dan. I, I applaud this commission. It, it's a lot of new commissioners, but they have been given their time. These meetings are longer now with less applicants because they are willing to spend the extra time at night for you to come in and to discuss it. So when you become before this commission, you're not wasting your time or your assets and your money. And you know exactly what, or maybe not exactly, but you know what the commission is looking towards. Right. And the one thing about the commissioners that are on this commission right now is that gratefully they all have strong opinions and they're not afraid to voice them. So you'll, you'll hear what the commissioners want and it's up to you to figure out how to make the majority of them happy. <laughs> Doesn't have to be me and Tony. Yeah, we try to make them all happy. And I mean, the bottom line is, <laughs> you know, and, and, then, and then make a decision on, on, on whether or not yeah. we can go forward. But, um, you know, all, all of us, I guess. But the, but I think that's fair. Does anyone else have anything that uh, that comes to mind on this discussion? Just Yeah, Dan. 
Dan, this is uh, Frank Woke. You and Neil both mentioned changing market conditions as, as one of the factors predicating this whole effort. I'd like to see some data that supports that position, please. Yeah, so I, I can go back to, um, because I'm talking about something, let me, let me, let me, let me make sure that uh, Neil jumping in is helpful to my cause and I'm not saying anything bad other than just saying what I'm saying, <laughs> which is- You're giving you work to do, Dan. Right, right. So I'm not saying that market conditions have changed in the last four years from when the approval here was achieved. I can say that when we sat down to design Farmbeck Place, which would have been back, you know, in the early 2012-ish, 2014, you know, something in that, 12 to 14, I think, is when we came in. That is when we identified a, um, a unit mix because that's what we then built, right? And so, so Frank, all I'm trying to say is that um, a ratification of the approach is the success of that project in some ways. And uh, okay. I can give you some leasing, uh, you know, the, the, the both buildings leased up immediately and have been full ever since. And so that to me is the best data um, from the standpoint of how things fit together some of it comes down to the feasibility of delivering portable housing, right? And so you, you, you pick a range of unit types, the, the slices occur um, per unit type, right? Um, across the uh, affordable versus market rate. And, and, and essentially you just, you wanna make sure that you um, have, have, a, have a, a size of a unit and also the interior finite because you, you can play games, I guess, with how the um, insides are fit up on the affordable units because you can't, it's not, there's nothing stigmatized about them um, from the outside because the common areas and the out, out exteriors are what they are. Right. But we didn't actually, maybe this is a philosophical thing on some level. We didn't play that game when we built uh, Barnbeck, right, with the 20% affordable set aside. We did the same specs throughout and I just, that's a citizen of the world type of comment, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But but I think the success of that project with the unit mix that makes us say that we believe it's um, appropriate to add to it incrementally. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know what you'd like to see to, to validate what I just said as it relates to the immediate lease up and then the sustained uh, occupancy, but but that's that would be my immediate answer. The data, any data that you can provide, I'll leave at your discretion. Okay. Um, maybe, maybe Neil, you weren't helping him. No, no, but Frank, I was, <laughs> well, I was just saying the hang, last hang four years. Second. You know, we all have different opinions, I guess, on on, on, on market opportunities. <laughs> yeah, I I look at the market, Frank, quite a, a little bit differently from from Dan, uh, though we're both in the same business of developing in uh, housing. Uh, sure. What I'm looking at, and I think the number, I'll get it for you, is how many units have been approved in Brookfield over the last four or five years that haven't been built? That's where the market has changed. And I, I, I was talking about it in a much different perspective mm -hmm. than what Dan was talking about. He's, he's talking about who rents units and who buys Understood. units. Understood. And I'm talking about who builds units. And there, mm -hmm. we got a lot of projects in Brookfield that are approved right now just sitting there, uh, you know. Well, there, is, I mean, there is a lot more to it than yeah. the approval, right? I mean, the, yeah. the, I'm on the board of a bank and then I also am a developer who borrows from banks. And so I, I have pretty deep insight into those dynamics um, for just getting construction loans. And it's not, it's not, it never seems to get easier. I'll tell you that. And so that, that's been a major barrier to entry for what Neil's talking about in terms of other approvals that are just not actionable. And some of it has to do with, um, <laughs> I guess I'm a little stingy on my market analysis because I don't wanna give it away to the world, right? I can tell you it'll work and I can tell you I built something down the road that worked well. <laughs> but, I, but I think that it, I, I don't necessarily wanna you know, give a, 
a full briefing on why I think this fits into uh, the mix. A lot of a lot a lot of other outfits will build to the larger unit mix. It'll 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 be a different demographic that uh, that moves in. We tend to have young, younger and older, but we don't, you won't see playgrounds and things like that. Or we didn't design um, and, and, and your unit mixing program influences who comes and finds it attractive and will move in. So there's a lot that goes into it beyond just gross demand. It's, it's, what, it's what you deliver and, and how well that um, fills a niche. And in some ways, maybe these smaller units are a niche, but we have found that the acceptance was very good when we, I mean, we have granite countertops and, and, and the affordable units at Farm Beck Place, and that's an appreciated feature. Completely unnecessary, right, to, uh, to do an income uh, constrained unit, but it's, uh, I think, why not? If you, if, you, if you can make the whole thing, you know, where, where if you're in your neighbor's unit, you don't want to call out that somebody got to move in because of, of their lower income. Right, you, you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to make that apparent to anybody. That's why you, you, you sprinkle them around the, through throughout evenly through the whole place, and um, mm -hmm. and it's a dignity thing. I mean, I, I mean, I could I could talk about all kinds of topics, but I don't want to take up all night. <laughs> but but these are these are some of the things that go through my head in response. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, so uh, thanks, Dan. Uh, you want to come back for another one? You know, just get a hold of Fran, and we'll put you on the schedule. And I, and I appreciate how quickly I got in this time. So I, it's very, very helpful. I, I applaud you guys for doing it. Okay. Thank Fran, you. Yeah. Helpful. Yes. Right. What are we on to next? Or can I um, talk about uh, May 20th? Uh, actually, with a couple things. Um, I sent an email to all the commissioners tonight regarding um, yes. reach, um, reach Newtown or uh, Newtown Reach. Oh, I'm going to pull it up again. Yep. Reach Newtown. They're, they're looking to come to Brookfield. They want to go to, was it 763 Federal Road? That's the red building right at the beginning of the uh, trail right there. Um, and I just didn't know what classification they could fit under to get them in there. I mean, is, would, would that, would you? You know what? It looks like community service facility because if you look at what community service facilities do, they're kind of like nonprofit, which is this reach new town. Um, helping doing things for a community like a Y, YMCA or something like that. So it okay. seems to fit into that pretty well. Okay. Okay. That's going to really require exciting. Stuff. That building's been empty forever. Yeah. Yeah. Good to, good to see somebody in there. That's good. Yeah. Agreed. Good. Then I just got one more and then we can call it a night. Or we'll, we'll talk about May 20th. Um, yeah. There's an individual that wants to do a, dro a dog training facility. It's indoors over on Sandcut um, Road over by the Golf Quest. Again, would, would you consider that personal services? Um, dog training, I would consider personal services, but we got to make sure they're not keeping them overnight. No, no. yeah, there's, there's, there's going to be no dogs overnight. This is somebody that has a business in Newtown, too, looking to come to Brookfield mm -hmm. and um, just wants no. to do dog training. No yeah. different than the dog rumor. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. That's, that's it for me. So. All right. All right. So um, does all the commissioners know what's going on with uh, May 1st, May 19th, and May 20th? All right. So May 1st, um, they are relaxing for, um, for restaurants and bars mm -hmm. that the bars can, uh, the curfew is being moved back to 12 o'clock. Bars, you can serve drinks without alcohol or drinks without food outside, not inside, and um, outside with social distancing, you know, the, the, the no mask, everything else is still in effect. May 19th, the governor is pretty much going back to everything is open, uh, bars, restaurants, everything else uh, still need to have your mask. However, come May 20th, if the state legislature does not move, to make a mask mandate, the mask mandate is gone, which means you froze up. legislature is going to meet to extend it, is from what I'm reading today. So, can you still hear me, mm. Kurt? You're um, you're muted. We were breaking up a little, Eric. You're freezing yeah, up. 
It says you're my, freezing uh, and breaking up. Battery. I need a battery. Um, so it comes to the question of what do we want to do with outside dining? Um, my my suggestion personally is to let it go till uh, end of October, regardless. Let them make up for anything they have. And then, you know, they have their outside thing, but it's up to the commission. You know, and, and I think, you know, they'll still be low in customers for a while. So yeah. the parking issue won't be as needed until about then, I would say. So it kind of balances out, you know, they're using part of the parking lot, but they won't need it. So I, I would hope that the tents would encourage people to eat outside because yeah, I really. recently ate in a restaurant and I was extremely uncomfortable. And the only reason I did it was because it was raining. I couldn't wait to get out of there and I couldn't wait to go home. It, I, I can't, I can't believe that, that we're allowing what we're allowing. I haven't been in a restaurant in over a year. Yeah. It's, it, but I would consider eating outside soon. Yes, absolutely. And I, 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 I'm fully in support of keeping the tents to encourage people to keep eating outside. Here, here. What would be the date that everybody would suggest that we can go to? Well, you said October, Eric. Yeah, yeah I'm actually thinking more like October 15th because I remember having too much snow on um, on Halloween. Did we did we have snow in October this year? Um, Some years we did. So. Yeah. We're due then we're due. Yeah, we're due. <laughs> You're right. God no. We're we're due for a Halloween snow. I think October 15 is fine, and we yeah, just re revisit it if we need to. And we could just see if that falls on a weekend. You'll let them have whatever the last weekend is closest to the 15. Okay. Get through sure. a weekend. Of, so, oh, actually, the 15th is a Friday. So Sunday. Don't let them finish out that weekend or whatever. Yeah. You think. Mon Monday. 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 Yeah. yeah. October that's, 18th. That's the only thing I wanted to discuss. Any other commissioners? No. Uh, Fran, the flag signs. Yes. Do, the, do all the people know that come April 30th, that's it? I've started telling everybody already, them and banners, yes. Because every time I go past the barber, that flag is out there. I know, I know. Yep, I know. Can yep. we all get authority to take them down on May 1st? <laughs> <laughs> we do hey, a in front of France house. France we'll do Fox. like a, a scavenger hunt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which whichever commissioner gets the most flags gets a prize. Oh, sounds good. <laughs> Is that it, friend? Uh, that's it for me. Yeah, I'm good. So. Well, then I'm gonna roll it right to Leslie. Oh, please. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> do I have a second? I second it. Yeah. All in favor. Bye. Uh, Bye. Have a good night, everybody. Night, good night everybody. Everyone. Night, everyone. Night, everyone.